Hello again and welcome to Man's Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are just a, within a week of the first in the nation presidential primary. It's like, a, boom, it's here. Well, yes, but... But also, then also not. I mean, so so uh, I guess the Democrats aren't really in the primary this well, time. So because they, Biden didn't, didn't file for the primary. The Democrat primary in New Hampshire. Which means that Democrats would have to write him in. I'm willing It'll to It'll be very interesting gonna... to see how that'll go. So right? I was I was imagining, because, oh, my God, can I just tell you about my week so long, right? Because with first in the nation, suddenly New Hampshire becomes important uh, yes. to the mainstream media, yes. I mean, now. Because we're always important to us. But uh, so they're just descending yeah. on here, right? Yeah. So basically, Iowa, that happened Monday. Yep. Vivek, for those of you who, I don't know, are not paying attention, uh, <laughs> dropped out, endorsed yeah, Trump. Endorsed Trump was at Trump's rally in Atkinson yesterday and very much um, Did got you go on. to that? No, yeah. um, I might go on Saturday. We'll see. Okay, yeah. Depends so what um, my ticket looks like. You know, from the start, I, I took several meetings with Vivek. Vivek came to Porkfest. Yeah. You know, I like his story. I love that I met some of his mm. friends who were like in college with him and they were like, look, we were really all reading Ayn Rand back yeah. in the day, all of that, right? Great. And he's good on his feet. And I loved the way he would handle protesters, right? Yeah. He'd, like, like, he'd bring them in. He'd be like, you got an opinion I want to have. You have one minute, ask your question, and then I'm going to respond, right. right? So instead of this just nonsensical yelling yeah. and canceling and whatever, like, hey guys we got to talk about the things that are problems mm -hmm. in a civilized manner if you're actually going to try and accomplish something anyway so he from the start i was kind of like this guy feels a little trump light l-i-t-e oh, I thought so and too. i, I mean, was like is he a placeholder and then the second i saw those results i well, was like well i was actually kind of surprised that he dropped i thought he'd go through new hampshire to me be honest too. um but i think so but you see, I see. I think so. If I were to speculate, this is all speculation. I have no basis in any fact for any of this. But it was so sudden that I was like, it almost felt like the deal was like, if I don't get ten percent in Iowa, I drop out. Right? Um, he only got seven. Yeah. Uh, DeSantis was second. Haley was third. But good grief! How much money have they spent well, in New Hampshire on so, Nikki Haley? Right. This is the thing. So here's my take on the Iowa caucus for now. So first of all, the Iowa caucus is just so much different. You know, when people complain that they can't absentee ballot by, you know, for no, you realize that the caucus, you have to physically go to the gym. Right. Like you can't mail it in. You can't just be late. You got to be in the door. You wait there and then they literally hand you like a piece of paper like we're at the state party meeting <laughs> and you choose it and you put it in the bucket and that's it. Like done and then they count the pieces of paper i mean it's that's it um i went and looked at well i was watching a little bit of it on a variety of you know youtube <laughs> we watched a little bit of c-span a little bit of abc you know all these different places um and right out of the gate i mean i don't like when they call races and to be honest they were doing a hundred percent just on entrance polls I don't even think any of the votes had been counted. Wow. And they called it for Trump because the entrance polls had him at like 48%. So if people on the way in, and what I found was interesting is so the Iowa, uh, Des Moines, Iowa register has a big poll and that's really what they depend on. And it comes out like the day of the caucus and it's pretty good. You know, like they get the numbers and, um, and were they fairly, they accurate? were pretty close. I think they had Trump at, 48 or 50 percent 48 percent i think they had as well and trump came in at 51 percent. Right? so i was yeah. looked at dan and i go so how does somebody come in like three points above what they you know like at that number and the reality is is we all say it all the time trump voters don't do the polls they hang up they close the door they don't want there are people who are voting for trump that don't want people to know they're voting for trump there are and then there's a lot of his very uh passionate supporters that are just like screw the system and um, it did end up at 51%. So Trump gets 20 of the Iowa delegates. Um, Ron DeSantis, 21.2% with nine delegates. Nikki at 19.1 with eight delegates. And uh, Vivek at 7.7 .7 with three delegates. Now, I don't know what happens to Vivek's three delegates now. To be honest, I mean, I, I assume they go to, the, to. They keep them, and they probably. I think go they're on. allowed to assign them, aren't they? Um, I think when they, I think they would. Um, don't get me. 
I don't claim to know, but I assume that by law he got those delegates, right? And that when they go to the convention, they, the, could, they the, could they they would then decide to go with whatever. Um, had to be a little disappointing for Nikki Haley um, talking about money. So I oh, say wow. all the mail. Wow! This, oh, look at this, guys. This, mail. this is all just full color. I don't save envelopes. Full color mail that has come to my house. <laughs> For the presidential primary. <gasps> wow. To give you guys an idea, I have a trash can yeah. under my mail well, I do, slot. I, I'll be honest that I don't read this it. mail. <laughs> I just put it in a bin. These are all Nikki Haley. Mostly pro Nikki Haley. Now, before that, we had this pile, which is AFP saying Donald Trump's so bad, and we knew that they were going to endorse somebody, right? So this is them. We can't say who we're going to support, but then we're going to pick somebody who I don't know how they support. Um, and I kind of feel you? really so bad for my friends that work for AFP who have to, like, well, you know, so I'm so curious why that happened. And we should have a discussion with someone there at some stage. It's not a New Hampshire thing. That we, and I, that's the difference. We forget I, that. I understand that. But even, you know, uh, even if it's like, you know, the swamp critters, it's still a strange pick because really the, the word on the street with Nikki Haley is... Um, is she like a secret Democrat? Right? Well, I don't think she's a Which secret I Democrat, but I mean, she is definitely a neocon. She is definitely of the, when they called her Dick Cheney in heels, that's because, well, she's like Dick Cheney in heels. She is of the Bill Crystal slice. She is a book in that. Like the Bush, hawkish, warish. You know, if that's what you want in, in a president, if you would like to be, you know, more engaged with bombing more places all over the world, then you should by all means vote for Nikki Haley. So I think here's, this could be a good test for our, our Congress critters. Uh, if they can't name all the countries that we're currently then they in probably undeclared be there. wars with, like every time the media asks someone who's pro-war something, they have to be like, which countries are we currently engaged in? And, and if they, they can't you. name them all, which I bet you they can't, Well, they by couldn't the way, because Vivek asked Nikki... I think, I don't know if he directed it just at Nikki, but he said, what are the county, the the territories or whatever in the Ukraine that you would like to send America's soldiers to? Because if you can't name that where they are, right. you shouldn't be sending soldiers right. there. And I thought that was completely <laughs> fair. You know, like, you need to understand it. And I, I understand. I mean, because I, as far as I know, I think we went to war with Yemen again on well, Friday. Well, we were doing something. You know, I was like, like, I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, right? honestly, it's not funny. No, this is a, a lot of waste. It's a lot of waste of money, but it's more importantly, it's a waste of human life and human right. potential. And it's not needed. Um, these are actually wars for profit for the most part. Otherwise, we would know why we're fighting there. We mm -hmm. would have some compelling reason. We'd all understand, hey, we're bombing the Yemenis because right. X, Y, and Z, right? right? And no one does. So... You know, we are at the stage, unfortunately, with a military industrial complex uh, in America where we are funding both sides of wars. Right. I mean, who knows what's going on in the Middle East at this stage? I saw South Africa up, right? is doing a, a tribune, uh, tri tribune, I guess. Uh, to look at the genocide yes. that's being committed we by, like, against the Palestinians. And I'm like, look, we should be having these conversations. You can't just look at war and go, well, this side is good for killing people and this side's bad for killing people. Right. War is bad. It's bad for everyone. Um, yeah. So I, it'll be interesting. I, I think... Going from, I, I mean, generally, this is not normal. This is not a normal election cycle. One, we've got, in New Hampshire, we have an existing incumbent president who isn't on the ballot. And then we have a former president, which you, I don't know if we've ever had former presidents run. I don't recall. You know what I mean? Maybe, um, maybe one of the Roosevelt's, I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, where there was a job. Where there was no. a gap. No, but but no. I mean, obviously, we've had the nepotism, right? Right, so where the multiple the Bushes, right. or but, but, you know, arguably that's what Kennedy is, right? Um, but but I know. mean, it's kind of like so. Nor so it's not a normal. It's not normal. So Trump from the get go said he's not doing the debates. 
that was his thing. He's not doing the debates, which I really can't blame him because all they do is scream things at him. Right. Right. And, it, and the media, I mean, whoever the commentators, it's it, it's such a bizarre thing. So the, um, I was last week when we still had more people in the race, um, I was debating going to the St. A's debate that was supposed to be tonight. And um, part then I realized that Vivek wasn't going to be in it. And I was like, so wait. Am I going to see Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis go after each other? Or both of them on stage going after Trump? And I thought, oh, I don't, I ain't got time yeah. in that for that. But then when Vivek got out, then yesterday, I mean, I had friends who were planning on going to the debate and all this stuff. Because it's a big, you know, takes hours out of your life. Because you can't just, like, go five no. minutes before the debate. you got to be there early. Find and parking, go through then security. Then I see that SNA no. canceled the debate. And I'm like... I'm oh. confused because at one point my thought was, well, Trump's in town. Is he doing the debate? Right. Because I'll go to that. That would be fun. <laughs> so then um, apparently Nikki Haley said she won't debate DeSantis unless Trump's there also. Hmm. So the only one willing to debate was DeSantis. Well, that's not a debate. That's a talk, a town hall. So Sainese had to say, well, we're not doing it, which is equally strange in this cycle it really is i mean i do feel and i don't know if this is a fair assessment but given what the democrats did to new hampshire with first in the nation uh this might be our last i don't think it'll be the last i think it, i think um in some ways some of i mean some of it'll change it's it's, it's never going to go back to the the boots on the ground new hampshire primary saga that i that i the, learned the, that the it was amazing roots when it was diners, absolutely the, right it was at, absolutely even the diner stuff now is canned and weird um yeah in fact, that's part of the reason why i liked vivek is he just did off the wall events you're right. like hey i'll meet you at the goat you know right. <laughs> and, and, yep. and go talk to people and then actually would go talk to people that was another thing is um you know a lot of times with these candidates they're very prepared they're very much going, nice to meet you. And they're right. uh, it's not real. Where Vivek was like, so this, and he was talking to you, and right. he wanted to know, and he yeah. wanted to talk to you, he wanted to know what yeah. your deal was. And, and I mean, maybe he's just good at that. Um, so for Nikki. I mean, he was. He is he personable. Was very, he just he's, got the, he's, he's charismatic. People, um, you know, but most politicians, honestly, that is part of your you gotta, job description. You've got to be good at it. And I don't honestly don't think DeSantis is really good at the people part, which is weird. I, mean, I met him personally yeah. like a couple of weekends ago. And, and first of all, you know, based on what Twitter was saying, I was expecting him to be, be like three four foot two. two. <laughs> and, you know, I'm five eight. And we right. were definitely looking each other in the eye. Yeah. So he's not like no, a he's little not super guy. Tiny, right? Oh, so I thought that was that amused me because yeah. you know you get these impressions right. if you just listen to the garbage on social media, right? And um, he seemed person. Look, he seems like an intelligent guy. He has an actual track record, which I thought was that was the well. Most governors persuasive. tend to be governors do tend to be the top of the pick um, for president. For president, but but so what? What I did find the most persuasive when I was talking to him, uh, besides his huge belly laugh when I told him I'm pro secession, <laughs> was um, that he said, you know, it's it's really easy in the case of someone like Vivek to be able to say. Um, I'm going to do all these things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shut down the IRS. I'm going to blah, 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 right? And we even saw a bit of that from Trump yeah. uh, before he got into office. And then you realize, oh, you know what? Draining that swamp is hard. The deep state is real. There's a lot, a lot, the deep a state lot is of real. vested interests, trillions of dollars of vested interests. Again, that's kind of why I'm like, I don't think we can fix D.C., but hey, if someone wants to try, Vivek was going to try. But what Ron said, actually, that I found persuasive was he was like, look, it's easy to say stuff. Yep. But he, Ron DeSantis was like, I have a record. Yep. I can actually show you what Things we did, you know. Right. And so that that I thought was compelling. Um, so I, I think Trump's, I, what do you think? Trump's so, going to take New yeah. Hampshire? Yeah. Well, only because, okay, so since the latest poll, um, this must be just New Hampshire polls. Um, Boston Globe, Suffolk, January 15th and 16th. So that's what? Yesterday and today ago, or two yeah. day, Monday, Tuesday. Um, they have Trump at 50. Okay. Haley at 34. DeSantis at 5. Mm. And I... If you look at the New Hampshire numbers, this is where I'm, See, I'm, I'm surprised. So I looked at the Ron DeSantis. I was, I was surprised that Ron DeSantis beat Nikki Haley in Iowa, right? Um, but then I looked at, if you look at who wins Iowa normally, I mean, uh, Ted Cruz won Iowa when Trump ran the last, the first time. 
um, Rick Santorum won. Uh, I don't remember uh, that um, one. <laughs> God, Arkansas. I can't think of his name. Uh, Governor's. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Huckabee. Huckabee. Huckabee won. Yeah. Huckabee, so Huckabee Santorum. So those are very um, Christian right supported type characters. So that's interesting that they picked DeSantis, like more picked DeSantis um, than Nikki. Because what does that say about Nikki? See, so I heard a rumor as well that... Um, <laughs> Actually, it's not a rumor. I actually think maybe I saw some tweets along these lines that uh, the Democrats are encouraging mm. independents to vote to pull Republican ballots yep. and to vote for Nikki. Right, and that and we're back is, to the same. We're back to the same type of Democrat shenanigans that happened in 2016. Because in 2016, honestly, and not because I was working for him, but honestly. The toughest one to beat would have been Rand. Right. The Democrats, there was no way they were going to beat Rand because he would just outmaneuver all of them, right? But they, the Democrats thought that Donald Trump was the easy target. <laughs> they thought, oh, he's just, you know, who's going to vote for him? And then, boom, there's like the whole Trump mania, right? So now, so that backfired. So now we've got... Um, I do think there's behind-the-scenes things happening, pushing, trying to push Haley... As to get the, her ahead, um, I, mean, I just it's, don't it's, see it's, her coming out of. I don't see her coming out of um, New Hampshire with a win, right? She's not going to beat Trump. She'll beat DeSantis, but DeSantis wasn't even coming to New Hampshire until he won the came in second in the Iowa. Like he was going right to South Carolina. He had said that, so he had no events planned for new hampshire between the caucus and tuesday so now he was here and had some sort of rally or is having some sort of rally um trump is here i mean you know like they work up the forces trump spoke last night in atkinson he's um at snoo arena on saturday he's at the rochester opera house or something also on i think saturday and then there was another location i don't remember what so i was like "Ooh, that's a lot of stuff so let's talk about RFK in this mix too, right? Mm -hmm. So because he's running independent, there's no primary for him. Right. Nothing with him happens Just has to spend like Tuesday. millions of dollars to get on the ballot in November. In November, right? right? And that's sort of ballot access. So you'll probably and... see people, I would think, I could be wrong. I would imagine that he will get some sort of percentage of write-in votes. He'll, on the Democratic ballot? On the ballot. Democratic ballot. Interesting, I mean, yeah. I don't think it'll be, you know, anything of any, but I, enough to be and, counted. And any, any, I have no idea, I genuinely don't, but any predictions on what Biden's write-ins might be? You know, I, don't, I think so people are a little put off far. by Biden. I, I mean, I How can you not be? The guy's 100, he has dementia, and he, <laughs> well, besides, he, he basically besides, said, we don't care about exactly. you. Exactly, well, strangers. that's the whole thing. He said, nope, we're not going to play in your state, screw you. That was his call. Um, and then they, then they, then the Democrats in New Hampshire were like, oh, well, we're going to do this write-in campaign. Okay, well, that's kind of, good luck with that. But then the DNC came back and basically said, there is no, no race in, in New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. There is no reason for Democrats to come out and vote in the primary, which one skirts on the edge of illegal in New Hampshire because you that's that's voter manipulation I mean what I know a Republican former uh executive director who spent time in a federal jail for supposedly suppressing vote the opposition's vote wow yeah and you probably know this too but just probably don't really know it <laughs> but um you know there's we have laws in New Hampshire um so if I were a Democrat, and if you look at the numbers, just look at the the whether you think that Biden's a good person or you know good president or not, the Democrats don't like him. A lot of Democrats are like, this is awful. Black voters are not lining up behind the Democrats like they're used to. Other minorities are not lining up behind the Democrats. Younger voters are not lining up behind the Democrats like they're used to. So I read an interesting thing yesterday from. Glenn Greenwald, who is a really great independent uh, investigative yep. journalist, he he's out of Brazil now, yep. but you know he's he he wrote for um, the Guardian, the, right? The Guardian for a long time, and then went to an independently mm -hmm. funded thing for a while. Anyway, he was saying that. Um, and I lost my train of thought. We were Sorry. talking about Biden um, and the numbers and the young people. Oh, voting. he was saying that um, he was talking about the sort of anti-establishment vote, which, you know, was kind of the bucket I would throw myself into. And he said there was a, a Obama to Trump 
pipeline of democratic anti-authoritarians. And I was like, huh? Those right. are all interesting words, right. right? But then I thought, oh, that actually makes sense. I do remember when Obama came to, to uh, became president. I mean, I liked his platform. Right. I liked the fact that he was talking about we we're going to end the war. Like all the all stuff the that, things he that, that he said that he didn't do. Yeah. See, again, that deep And I think, young, I think that's where the young vote comes in. And the in. young people, that appealed to them, right? Yep. Because, I mean... Until you become jaded and you just sort of accept all these terrible things, you know, as a as a young voter, yeah. I think you understand. Yep. You know, why are we in these wars? Well, why think, are why is this corporatism I think Biden, everywhere? I mean, besides the fact that he's three thousand years old and has dementia and all these different things, he also came very strongly in the last election. Said, "I'm going to wipe out your student loan debt. I'm going to do it." And we all knew that's probably never going to happen because, right. one, I don't think you have the authority to do that. And, two, that how would that even work? But think about it. If you're a young person, that was a thing. You were like, oh, that's okay. A, I mean, that oh, is okay, quite, I'll, frankly, that's like a, a communist level right. South right. American bribery right. of some and then, dictator. And then I know they, they like even, to say Trump's they didn't a dictator, even, but no. come on. Uh, then they didn't do it. So now you've got young people, and I mean – I. It's not that I don't have feel for these people. Don't get me wrong. But I think some of the is generational. I think some of it is um, lifestyle choice, you know, things. But there are. There's a lot of young people who have more student loan debt than they ever should have taken on ever. They are struggling to buy homes because, one, there are no homes. And, two, inflation is out of control. So their lives are just a hot mess. And they thought life would be better by then. So now they just want to burn it all down. Right. So let's talk a little bit about those student loans. So uh, for folks who, uh, you know, sometimes wonder where we're coming from, right, when we talk about why government should be limited, here's a little test you can do for yourself, which is the following. Go look at any industry where mm -hmm. government has gotten involved. Yep. The price, price goes, goes up. up. Because regulations and that red tape and that deep state that keeps chugging along yep. costs money, yep. right? And so um, with education, I actually really do deeply feel for students and stuff because, well, you know, now people are like, what? I have $250,000 right. in student loans. Right. And it's like you are under this yoke. Uh, that you're going to have to dig yourself out of, and you probably could have gone to a trade school, right? And you, you, you got bad, <laughs> you got bad direction in that government school when they said, "Well, Carla, you need to go to college, and it's going to put you two hundred thousand dollars in debt. You won't get a job that you." Well, can it's pay also for that with. It, it's that sort of thing where we talk about incentives matter, and are you creating industries to support something that shouldn't be sustained to start with? Whether mm -hmm. it's you know looking at uh, homeless projects or homeless nonprofits and being like, but why do you exist if you're right. solving the problem? So right. you're not solving the problem; you're just becoming part of the problem. And so with the student loans, it's uh, you know the banks are colluding with this. And I want to say this actually to folks back home. Everyone remember in 2008 when the big banks got the bailouts? Yeah. Um, I remember that was around about, the, maybe it was 12, uh, around about the time where we were really, everyone was mad. On the left, Occupy was mad. On the right, the Tea Party was mm. mad. And people were protesting in front of the people whose fault it is, i.e. in front of the government and in front of yep. the big banks. And those two groups of people collude, right? They're cronies and they work together. And they took taxpayer dollars yep. and they gave it to the banks. They bailed them out, right? And that moment was a watershed moment in America. And I think that scared the crap out of people because we were actually fighting the right enemies right, right. and then from that time they have somehow through social media spun it yep. around again and now suddenly everyone's in the culture wars yep. someone literally said this to me from a video on friday you know i have my my red glasses on or my red dress on and you know my hair or whatever and people were like she doesn't look republican what does that even and i mean? was like why are we talking about people's looks did we not do remember right. well, how we evolved it, past why is that? it okay for people to say that but think about it why is it okay for democrats to say that about republicans now if i pick somebody out of a crowd and go well they don't look very democrat I'm the terrible right. person, you're a but bigot, they do you're the a same things. But they, oh, all the time, right? All the time. And so I would encourage folks 
to be like, let's start fighting the real enemy again. Let's stop fighting each other and let's fight the systems that are making us all poorer. Your student loans shouldn't be that much and your money shouldn't be worth, worth, nothing. worth nothing. Your groceries shouldn't cost you $200 when they used to cost you 80 They just shouldn't. Right. It's and insane. this is not at the hands of the Republicans or the Democrats per se, it is because the we government. have a uni party. Yep. Well, we have, we have the deep state. Yeah. We, the, you know, it, that's not a conspiracy. The, the permanent DC, the, you know, the bureaucracy that exists in Washington DC that doesn't change when a senator comes out, a senator comes in. Those those people in there making all this money and the, the lobbyists and the firms and, you know, K Street and all of that, that never changes. The, you know, there might be a couple people, faces of things that change, but a lot of it. And that's but what, the machine. The, the machine system, does not the change. The thing that Pink Floyd sung about <laughs> in the wall, that system. It's insane. It is really not, is. Yeah. Um, and it's too big. And that is actually why people are so frustrated and unhappy. And, you know, and I actually, I saw an RFK clip um, on Insta yesterday that felt very redeeming yeah. because I remember we've talked about it on the show as well that, you know, in 20, I believe it was 2012 or 13, uh, it became legal again for the intelligence agencies in America to propagandize its own citizens. And I will say there's a direct correlation between that authorization and the discord that we yep, see yep. now, right? Because it behooves, we all know the divided, if, if, if the they, United I was gonna we say, divided, if everybody's fall, running right? around in chaos, the government can do whatever they want. Right. And, they, and we're not even, and so, I don't know, we and are. They but, are. And, and, and the, the level of corruption and profit and the fact that someone like the, the Department of Defense has lost trillions of dollars in audits that cannot be accounted for, all of this is going somewhere. And those people who are getting wealthy off the corruption and the immorality have a vested interest to get us all fighting each other. So let's not do it. Um, <laughs> so Tuesday, make sure you get out and vote. Uh, your polls in, in Manchester are open from 6 in the morning till 7 at night. Uh, the Secretary of State's office has told the clerks that they can re release the results of the Republican ballots before they complete the Democrat because of the write-in situation. Oh, okay. Um, they, in other words, they're treated as it's two different things, two different sets of ballots. Um, but you're, they has said you can release the Republican results, so we should know by 8 o'clock, um, give or take what um who has done what um i it, it's gonna it'll be trump i'm assuming it's gonna be trump uh nikki desantis um and then they go on i believe to nevada in between and then two weeks from now in south carolina which is nikki's home state um unless desantis honestly i think unless desantis does something something um i don't see how he survives past south carolina you know, I just, I mean, uh, things can change, but I'm just saying, how is he going to get past South Carolina when that's Nikki's home state? Right. And I think actually, you know, the, the, the sort of establishment made a mistake. And where, they, and where does he go? Right. And, and I think they made a mistake again with Trump. It's like, do you guys never learn anything? Now they're like, we're just not going to talk about him. Right. Uh, we don't talk about him. He doesn't like exist. He's on Twitter and with me getting, tweets and that's it. And then it's he's like, he's more. not on there, but he's still getting support. Yep. So maybe that's a lesson. So anyways, I'm going to take my, you know, five pounds of mail <laughs> and um, grab lunch. And I'm going to make sure I vote on Tuesday and you should do the same. And then next Wednesday, we can talk about what happened in New Hampshire and then move forward with winter because I think spring is this close, right? I like it. This close. All right, Anyways, guys. Bye. Stay warm.